Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My ex, 30 female, and I, 31 male, share a seven-year-old son together. Our marriage ended four years ago when I discovered she was cheating on me. Our divorce stalled because she announced her pregnancy, and as her husband, I was presumed the father. We had to wait until her daughter was born, and a DNA test was carried out for the divorce to continue. And then I also had the battle of making sure I was not responsible for her second child, which is something she was arguing for, because the real father did not want to be in the child's life. It was a very stressful and costly time, and my ex's and my ability to co-parent was destroyed during this period. On my end, because she was trying to make me responsible for her child with someone else, after cheating on me, and after trying to stop the divorce a few times, because she wanted to work things out and be a family. On her end, because I knew she was not going to get anywhere with the biological father, and she hates me for not stepping up so her daughter could have a dad. I pay child support to my ex, and my son lives with me 50% of the time. The reason for the child support is to make up the difference between both households, so my son isn't living very comfortably with me, yet struggling to eat well at his mom's. My ex has requested more child support twice. The first time we made it in front of a judge, and it became clear she was trying to get me to indirectly pay child support for her second child. The second time, we did not make it in front of the judge. It was denied an actual court appearance for a lacking of changed circumstances. My ex has asked me to take her daughter before when I pick up our son, or she has asked me to buy things for her daughter. I always say no to this every single time. I only communicate with her through an app that the judge added to our order. This is used 90% of the time for sharing important appointments or dates with our son's school. We don't really work together and could not. Our houses are very different, the rules are very different, and the expectations are very different too. But that will not change because we will never get along enough to agree on shared rules between both houses. This all leads me to the state of things presently. My ex is expecting her third child very soon, and again there's no biological father who will step up. Now that she is adding another child to the mix, and again will only have one father paying child support, me. She asked me while we were at our son's school if I would help her out more and take on a role in the lives of her other kids. She said she could easily be homeless in a couple of months if things don't change. I refused to help her, even hearing that, and when she asked what about our son, I told her that our son could stay with me until she gets back on her feet. She called me an a-hole, and she started to make a scene where I had to walk away so our son wouldn't see or hear anything. She yelled after me, but I didn't engage anymore. Am I the a-hole? Wow, this woman is crazy. Angry OP won't step up and be a dad to the kid she had during an affair. She made her bed, so now she has to lie in it. OP is doing what is right for his son and is providing for him. He will always have a roof over his head whether it's hers or OP's. That's where OP's responsibility ends. Maybe it's time to possibly go for full custody. If the other children end up in the system, she only has herself to blame. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Ask you to says, not the a-hole. Your only responsibility is to be a good dad to your son and provide for him. The other children are not yours and already have a father. Your ex must ask child support to the respective fathers. The bad agent says, not the a-hole, but at this point, why aren't you using this argument against the ex to gain full custody? The ex will keep making more and deteriorating the quality of the household your child lives in half the time. Do not handle her other kids. She is responsible for her own body. Elekatel says, not the a-hole. It is her decision to continue with these pregnancies, knowing her own circumstances. Regardless of how she might feel about her options, it's not like she doesn't have any. I'm sure the courts would be more than happy to grant you 100% custody if she isn't able to fulfill her parental obligations to your shared child because of her own decisions. It's harsh, but it's not your problem. My 41 son, male 20, has been in a relationship with his girlfriend, Lily, female 20, for about three years now. I love my son, and I hate to say this, but he's not turned out to be a good person. He has very little work ethic 
has no desire to get a job or go to college, and spends most of his time gaming or partying. Lily, on the other hand, is the polar opposite. She's very studious, has aspirations to be a doctor, is a very good swimmer, and is currently away at college. When my son and Lily first got together in high school, they were an excellent match. We loved having Lily over, and my son definitely took more care of himself. Since then, it's rapidly deteriorated. I know my son still loves Lily, but he never gives her the attention she deserves, and with her clear potential, I just feel she deserves better. When Lily came to visit a few days ago, she was visibly upset. When my son went to the store, I asked her if she was okay, and she told me that she didn't know what to do, and wondered why my son had such little ambition and was so lazy. I told her I didn't see it changing anytime soon, as that's my view given it's been ongoing for almost two years. When she asked what I would do in her situation, I told her to put herself first and what she wanted. Lily thanked me and said she'd think about things. Well, earlier today, my son comes downstairs in a rage, telling me that Lily had broken up with him via text. I asked him what she said, and apparently, the message referred to discussions with your mom that had made her rethink the relationship. My son was livid that I'd gotten involved and said I'd overstepped boundaries. I told him that I didn't advise Lily to leave him, just said she had to make her own choices and decide what was best for her. My son is now not talking to me, and my husband is annoyed, believing that having no Lily will make my son's rut last even longer. I also miss having Lily around. So am I the a-hole? Well, OP told her son's girlfriend the truth. She didn't encourage her to break up with him. OP's son has a hard lesson to learn here. Relationships require maintenance, and he has not owed infinite patience from his partner. If he checks out and stops trying, he has to accept the possibility that they will leave. When it comes to OP's husband, he needs to understand that it's not Lily's responsibility to fix his son. Only Lily gets a soft downvote from me for mentioning the discussion with his mom. She did not have to add that point. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Many Hobbies Gal says, Not the a-hole. You didn't tell her to end the relationship. You told her to consider her feelings. Your son certainly wasn't. Tell your husband it isn't up to Lily to get your son out of his rut, and maybe he needs to spend some more time teaching him how to be a good man and not a mooch. Let your son be angry. He will do one of two things. Stay angry or get off his butt and start pulling his own weight. Too many young adults have little to no aspirations and are more concerned living in the moment. E. Liver Curry says, Not the a-hole. You didn't tell her to break up with him. You told her she needs to put herself first, which is solid advice to anybody. The fact that putting herself first meant breaking up with your son is his issue for being a waste of space. Your husband can also get in the bin, expecting Lily to get him out of his rut. If it's that simple, he can get involved and sort it. He's his son. Besides, who knows? Maybe this will be the kick in the butt he needs to sort himself and win her back. Unlikely, as this isn't a rom-com. But never say never. Lady Vader says, Not the a-hole. Tell your husband that Lily is not a trained professional to fix your son. And what is he even thinking trying to put that responsibility on a young girl? Maybe he should be a good father and lead by example, instead of expecting that from someone else. So I, 26 female, and my husband, 32 male, welcomed our baby boy about a year ago. It was my first pregnancy, and honestly, was pretty rough. The labor pain was incredibly severe. Still, I wanted natural delivery, so I went through all of it. Due to the severe pain, I couldn't control and was screaming and crying. My husband, who hasn't slept the whole night, got agitated by the screaming and said to me to just try to suck it up a bit instead of screaming like this. I honestly cried because of his comment and the pain. The baby was born some hours later, and we sort of forgot of the incident. A few days ago, my husband felt sudden pain in his stomach, and it only got more severe, to the point we had to take him to the hospital at that moment. The doctor did a few checkups and told him he had a kidney stone and needs treatment. Since the pain was so severe, my husband got painkiller shots. Even during that, he was screaming at the top of his lungs. At that moment, I got petty, and since I was already fussy from sleeplessness due to taking care of a toddler, I told my husband, can't you just suck it up for a while? Why are you shouting so much? He was shocked, and then later remained quiet. When we went home, he was still quiet, and when asked, 
He told how insensitive I was, and he felt so bad. To this I reminded him of the time when he said that same thing. Now he is angry, and calling me petty, and that he didn't mean anything, but I had malicious reasons. So am I the a-hole? Edit. To all the people asking if we love each other, yes, we do. It wasn't like I held on to what he said to me. However, in that moment, everything was so similar to that time that I remembered that incident, and in the spur of the moment, I said it to him. I did not ask him to go out of the delivery room or make a big deal about it that time, because even though I was hurt, I understood his sentiments as well. Stress from work, sleeplessness, overwhelming feeling of being a parent for the first time, and a constantly screaming wife can really mess with a person. I didn't want to keep him away from being the witness of his child's birth or ruin his later moments with the baby just because of that. Was it a childish thing to say? Yes. But that does not mean we didn't fulfill our responsibilities. He took care of me and did everything a dad should, and I did everything for him likewise. No, we are not going to divorce each other over such silly banters. It's not like we always fight or act petty. If I wanted to be real petty, then I could have done a lot of other things as well, but that wasn't my intention. Yes, we have childish conversations sometimes, but they are usually funny banters. It is one of the very few times where I wanted to come and get some insight. Looks like those kidney stones are karma for him. It was not very nice of him to say suck it up to a woman who was giving birth to his child. Horrible thing to say. I don't know how I could forget it if I was in OP's place. Honestly, this is one of those moments that I can see ruining a marriage. He should be reminded of what he said, especially if he never apologized for being insensitive and rude during a pretty emotional moment for both OP and him. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Galaxy Malone says, you were petty, but damn well justified. Tell him your pettiness stems from how you have never forgotten how he spoke to you when you were at your most vulnerable. How'd he like them apples? Not the a-hole. Annoyed Prickly Prick says, Haha, <laughs> I can see my wife doing exactly this sort of thing if she were in that situation, so I'll go with not the a-hole. Was it a mature kind of decision? Not really. So I suppose it makes you a little mean, but hopefully he will quit wallowing in self-pity and realized that dismissing the pain of someone who he claims to love is beyond callous and was wrong of him. String Phoenix says, Not the a-hole, girlfriend. I don't have experience giving birth, but I have had kidney stones, and I've been told the pain is comparable. And you went through yours without meds. How the tables turn. So I, 31 male, have three beautiful daughters, seven, five, and two, which for some reason, people in my life think I'm not completely happy with. If I had a pound for every time I heard, I bet you wished you had a son, or are you ever going to try for a boy, I'd be a millionaire. Look, if my wife, 30, got pregnant again and had a boy, my reaction would be the same as the other three. In my opinion, as long as your child is healthy, who honestly cares? The worst and most annoying people towards my wife giving me a son are my sister-in-law, 29, who has four now, pregnant with the fifth boy, and my 57 mother-in-law. By the way, I should mention neither of our cultures, Irish, English, care about gender. Last Sunday, we were at my mother-in-law's for Sunday lunch, and my sister-in-law said after dessert to come out to the back garden, as they had a balloon to announce the gender of their new baby. Well, long story short, she's having another boy. After everyone congratulated her, she made her way to us and said, I bet you wish just once it would be blue for you guys. Then turned to my wife and said, it's never too late to try again. It royally pissed me off because my oldest was in earshot. I turned to her and said, well, actually, Alice, I wouldn't give one of my daughter's dirty socks for what boys wear in Europe. And the fact that you base your love on your child's gender says a lot about you as a mother. I don't need a son, so I suggest you take your advice and stick it. She stuttered for a second then burst into tears saying I was putting her and her kids down. The mood was ruined after that and we left. Since then, my in-law said she deserves an apology and it's been a long running joke so I shouldn't have driven my sister-in-law to tears. Foxy Kid 9 says, not the a-hole. I come from a culture, African-American and Muslim, where they prefer boys and hearing other family members only dote on my older brother, it leaves you feeling unwanted. You were only sticking up for your daughters and your wife. As long as kids are healthy and it's a safe pregnancy is all that matters. 
people need to stop preferring one gender over the other. OK Pumpkin 174 says, A-hole enthusiast 9, not the a-hole. Your sister-in-law has been making rude comments all throughout the years. She shouldn't make hurtful comments and expect you to stay silent. Baby genders do not matter, and girls are definitely taking over the world. Hi, I'm Dadbot says, not the a-hole. It's a running joke if the people it's directed towards think it's funny. She was being an a-hole to you for a long while, and then got all offended when you called her on it. She's at fault here, not you. So, me and hubby are atheists, and we have always made it very clear that no child of ours would be christened. Mother-in-law kept bringing it up, but we always told her a categorical no, until one day she thought we had dropped it. Then she came into a substantial amount of money and gave 25,000 pounds of it to me and hubby. We were very thankful and shocked by her generosity, but we honestly thought this was a no-strings-attached gift. We've since invested the money, a 5,000 pound for our baby, and 20,000 pounds towards our retirement. Fast forward a few weeks to Christmas. Mother-in-law starts telling us that our baby would be christened in summer, as this is tradition, and all of the family would be coming from overseas. Apparently, they were all very excited. Once the shock wore off, I started saying, it's just not happening. All she could say is, I want this and that, but we stuck to our guns until she left. Now she wants the 25,000 pounds back. Apparently, this money was conditional on us christening our baby. She said she would only sacrifice her retirement money to save her grandchild's eternal soul. She never actually goes to church herself if that matters. We see it as massively hypocritical. So hubby and I are obviously pissed, and we don't want to give this money back, as it has already been allocated and invested. She will not starve over 25,000 pounds. Her husband is a millionaire, and he has no opinion on this apparently. So would we be the a-holes if we kept the money? Christening our baby is out of the question. Edit. To everyone telling me to just do the christening. No. It's just not happening for many reasons that me and my husband have discussed at length many times. This question was not about if I should christen my child. It was about keeping the money. Moth Cow says, not the a-hole. If there were conditions, she should have made it clear in the first place. That's how any contract works. Duck U Gallon says, not the a-hole. Presumptive on the fact that if she had said, before or at the time, if giving you the money, that you would have declined, returned it if she had made it conditional on the christening. Also, just to confirm, You've checked with your spouse to make sure they didn't know the money was conditional. Flying Dutch Lady says, Not the a-hole. One must present the conditions when presenting the gift. She should have told you then. The money is spent, and that's that.